All right, welcome back. So this is a quick video. I was just doing a quick ride along with um, a tech that just joined us here. And I'm um, just watching him do his thing. So this was a kind of strange one because initially there was not really any signs or symptoms of the issue of the calls. A no heat call on a good mid 90% furnace. So yeah, the tech did notice initially that there was um, a low uh, micro ramp reading on the flame sensor. So we went ahead and pulled that. And, um, pulled that and cleaned it and things like that. But upon further inspection and letting the system run a bit longer, this is why I always stress run the system as long as possible during maintenance because essentially there could be other things that pop up other red flags yellow flags whatever that might pop up that um won't that won't necessarily just show itself within two to three five minutes worth of runtime might take 20 15 20 30 minutes of runtime so this is just a quick video showing how sometimes you have to play detective whenever doing diagnostic calls if the problem is not right there um, right under your nose. So, so yeah, stay tuned. Enjoy. Is there anything I should do or test with a downstairs one? Um, to make sure it's good to go or if it's good Honestly, good. if you haven't had it serviced, I have not, no. another thing as well with the flame sensor cleaning, it could, there could be other issues because, um, right now I'm hearing the, the inducer, you can hear a little bit of water building up in there as well. So, um, that flame sensor is definitely low, but what I was gonna saying about the downstairs system, if you haven't had it serviced since um, owning it, I would definitely recommend having a system serviced. And we do provide a maintenance plan where we come out twice a year. Essentially, once we come out once in the spring for the cooling, come out once in the fall for the heating. And that actually includes flame sensor cleaning. So if you wanted to sign up today, we'd actually take care of cleaning both flame sensors. Wouldn't charge you at 120, it'd just be um, for two systems, $30 a month. We'll swap yeah. the that might be good, especially with the burnout. I mean, my wife and I can get by, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Basically. Maybe we want. To <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, that's thirty a month, and that includes just the, the twice a year. Yes, sir. Okay. Clean the coils. So in the springtime, we'll clean the outdoor coils, make sure those are properly rejecting the heat. Check capacitors. Check volts and amps on the motors. Make sure they're running with inspect. Check the static pressures, which essentially static pressures like the blood pressure of the systems, and making sure there's not too much restriction on the duct uh, on that motor because okay. the motor. The more it's trying to um, work against restriction, the more it's essentially causing that motor to um, overheat and run hot. That so. would be good because we never really know if it is. Obviously, I see the efficiency rating on that one out there, but sometimes it, it takes forever to heat certain places. Yeah. Her room stays really cold and really hot, opposite of whatever is running. So yeah. we have a space heater in there, and we try to keep it cool in the summer. So. And that's pretty much common with the, pretty much every unit in this development. Is usually the room bl directly below the furnace is getting the most load, yeah, that's our and then room. It's like winter in there. yeah, exactly. And this, based off the fact that the systems are um, all the ductwork and everything's under the, in the ceiling, essentially, there's really not much you can do about that. Yeah, we keep her cool and warm. But all right, well maybe that's what's sign enough for then to have the twice a year sanity check to make sure everything's good to go. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can definitely do that for you, man. Absolutely. Cool. Already putting the stubby to work. <laughs> yeah, man. I think it's super versatile, man. Try that out. Be done with it. Uh, it's got five sixteenths quarter inch. Nope, you don't even have to put, connect that if you don't want. If you want to, the steel might be a little snug if you do, though. Oh, okay, yeah, I just wanted to show you here. So that's your flame sensor, and essentially, what up, this is doing is it's basically uh, recognizing it's telling the furnace there's flame present. So this basically gets uh, engulfed in the flame, and as it starts to build up, you see it's building up a little bit of sediment and stuff yeah corrosion so you once you wipe that off it basically is a super sensitive i mean it's reading in the um micro amps so essentially it's um it only takes a small fine amount of build up in order to actually compromise the performance kind of, of this thing nuts and the signal would actually kick on exactly okay. so yeah i just wanted to show you that's pretty much i appreciate know. it i know nothing about this world so i appreciate all the oh education. yeah man. 
Yeah, I see you're kind of hands-on, so I like to, you know, educate like people when they can. I never understood this stuff, and yeah. I work in, like, tech and, you know, networking, and have yeah. to explain some of the same things when people think, I don't know how this server works. Like, understanding the flow really helps, so that's nice. helped me. Awesome. Man. Yep. How long have you guys been doing this? I've been doing it about five years. Uh, Ricky, what's... Uh, about a little over 14 and a half years. Wow. All here in Charlotte area? Uh, yeah, me personally, yeah. Five yeah. years here in Charlotte. Awesome, yeah. I'm from Ohio where the winters were much more fierce. Oh, yeah. I moved here about eight years ago. Okay. Love yeah. it. Love okay. it here. Awesome, man. Likewise. Let's see if that does the trick. So we're just going to clean that thing off. It looks like a wire brush there. Uh, quick questions. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, so when you reset it, how long did it um, did it run after you reset it any? or? No, I saw that purge light, so I was obviously Googling to see what that did, and I gave it a couple minutes. I came back up, and like I could hear the, the fan running a little bit, so I thought, great, it's going to kick on, it's going to work, and then it just went quiet again. Okay, when you said but the purge light, you talking about the purge light on this here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And it was blinking, which I read is giving me a few issues or a few things, but I never actually got the blower to come on. I just heard like a fan that told me, hey, we're getting power, we're working, but... Not never heard the actual gas, the fern, yeah. furnace actually kick on. Okay. All right, just making sure. Any, I mean, frequency, like I replace these probably every four or five months or when it tells me to, but yeah. the one inch, are those, should those be more frequent? One inch, definitely more frequently. You definitely want to do these. I mean, I would check them at least once a month. If they look pretty bad, you know, start looking pretty impacted after a month, replace them once a month. I usually recommend replacing them once a month regardless of the one inch. Oh, that's easy to do. And I, I have a big stack of the other ones done. I'm just not these, but I ordered them some today as a beer tomorrow. Do the filters look pretty dirty when it, before it went off? Too bad. The okay. The wipes for me for the lower floor was okay. barely dirty at all. I almost felt bad throwing it out. I hear the you. The 14 that was down below this one for the mid level, it was pretty bad. There was a lot of dust from construction, so the first few I changed here were nightmares. Okay, this well. This one's pretty dark. That's why I know I need a mid level. As a matter of fact, let's see here then. So the second floor, this second, the second floor is to this furnace. Yeah. So basically, that would be an indication that. If that was really bad, it could have just gone out on high limit. I mean, this isn't, this is bad, but it's not terrible. You still right. can see through it. That's why I was like, all right, at least I can get one tomorrow. But the other one was pretty dark. Okay, it was worse than this? Yeah. All right. So you could have had an issue with, uh, it could have potentially be just an issue with, um, That's why I thought when I thought that, I was hoping it would come back on. But, like, if that, if it hits that high limit, does it need something to reset it? Or? Well, how did you actually reset it? Because, yeah, basically. I just flipped the switch. Okay, so you hit the power. Okay, so that should have done it if it was just a high limit, honestly. I think um, I did that before I changed the filter, so maybe my sequence was out. Uh, yeah, it might have, might have faulted out again. I've been doing this basically while carrying her around. Oh. Uh. Like, I, <laughs> I respect it, man. Definitely. That was a good, good attempt. And I appreciate that. Will do, no problem. Thing I'm always trying to verify. It's draining pretty well, right? But um, yeah, we'll come back. Um, but the thing, yeah, we'll come. I'm gonna let it run for a bit and see what we get. Only thing I was noticing slightly. I don't know if you hear that. You hear that noise? That's basically um water essentially in the uh, inducer housing essentially so you're hearing the fan spinning that up tick that's what that little um it's not a clicking noise but it's kind of smells like a swooshing noise in there so we're going to see if that gets any worse if that persists then we understand that that's more than likely going to be see this here 90 so this 90 first we check the how, how level the furnace is, but this 90 should have a bit of a of a slope, but it also could be this here is clogged up. You know what I mean? Not allowing it to drain out, so it's falling back into the inducer. So you've got a. Uh, this could be a potential clog in here. We'll see what we get with it. But like I said, that's why I want to let it run some. 
let it run for another 15, 20. It's probably going to get a little worse than that. And if so, all right, so like I was saying, so it did cut off. I don't think it was due to being satisfied as well. I think it's just, no, it's, it's still calling for zone two. I don't think it turned that off. So we're hearing that gargling noise. That's essentially water building up in this inducer housing here. In the plastic part. So if that usually is an issue, that's gonna be either this 90 doesn't have enough pitch down so the water can slope back through here or this is actually clogged. We're gonna check both of those out. I wonder why it's calling still. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go ahead and um, turn it off. I guess turn off the first here at the gas. Let it cool. So you heard the water stop giggling. Now what I do, see this little yellow cap here? Boom, see that water? Not much, come out now. But, let me turn this off. Look at this. These are pretty decent, not much, but we have to vacuum it mostly out. What I like to do with this is um, pull this here 90 off, and make sure this here, make sure it's got no obstructions. The only thing about that though, in order to pull the 90 off, you actually have to take the whole deucer off, which is kind of weak. Let's take a look through here. It's not bad, as you can see. It's got a little bit of build up in there. You can see some PVC shavings and things of that nature, but not enough to cause a real clog. So, nothing crazy. What that means is there's just not, it wasn't enough pitch on this 90 for where the 90 is pitching down like such slightly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so if it's not pitching down, the water is not able to run down this through here. It runs back and into the inducer. That makes sense. So, so in order to do that, just basically pull down. I couldn't capture it recording, but I just kind of pull down on this here 90 while tightening up here, and it lets it maintain a nice slope downward for the water to flow down rather than flowing back into the inducer. But that was just an install error. But we're good. It's tightened up snug now. That should not do that again. I also cleared out all the lines, made sure all these were all cleared out. Blew out the trap and uh, cleared the inducer. So we'll see what we get. Okay, so I'm trying to do a combustion analysis of uh, this 90% furnace in the little townhouse here. And I'm looking at my readings and I'm only seeing, you know, nothing's registering. I've got 20% oxygen. I just checked on the uh, upstairs system. My, 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 uh, my analyzer is working fine. What I did notice as I'm looking up here, I don't know if you could tell, the smoke's not bellowing out of the exhaust outlet. It looks like it's coming out of the other side for the air inlet. So what we have here is going to be a um, concentric setup here. And I'm going, to, I'm going to test that theory. I already know that's what it is, but let's verify it. Because we're not testing, we're, we're not, oh sorry, we're not guessing, we're testing. So let's go ahead and take out our... Take that out. And now you see why. Now you see why maintenance are so, so essential. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a quick combustion analysis test here. Let's see what it's looking like. See if it's affected our measurements any. 
on that nail like such. Start. Let's take a look. Our CO stays below 100 parts per million. O2 should be probably within oh, maybe 5 to 13, 14. Let's take a look here. I want to see what our static is as well. CO is not doing that bad. All right, so yeah, this is a pretty peculiar situation. Yeah, this is why I always stress the importance of maintenance. Uh, you can see here. This was both at the same house. It was a two, uh, a three-story townhome with two systems. The upstairs system had two zones: one for the middle floor, one for the third floor. Yeah, this was uh, he's been running the system like this for years, and pretty much, I we've been to a bunch of these townhomes in this development, and a good, I'd say about maybe 50% of the units have had this issue with the 90-degree um, elbow coming out of the inducer, not having enough pitch. And it all on the upstairs unit as well. And just due to probably more than likely they just should have put a little bit of pitch on that furnace. Or either that or just the way they've actually installed the 90 to the um, exhaust pipe. But long story short, we went ahead and got him a quote to replumb his downstairs furnace flue pipe. Other than that, he's good to go. Systems are up and running. They got everything checked out as far as the maintenance. Uh, we're good to go. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.